<laughs> Chapter 12, Section 1 is starting us off on stem and lean plots. Chapter 12, as I told you, was going to take us away from the functions and the line stuff. That's where we're going to start the next six weeks. Uh, we really do have a lot to cover still this year. But uh, we're going to move away from that because the rest of the line stuff, other than what we covered last week on Thursday, is slightly more difficult. Definitely not something I want to cover while you're doing World War II. So we're moving on to chapter 12, which is the start of the uh, charts and data section. We're talking about stem and leaf plots today. Definition of a stem and leaf plot. A data display that helps you see how data is or are distributed. A data display that helps you see how data is or are distributed. Data display that helps you see how data is or are distributed. So there's two types of stem and leaf plots that we're actually going to work with today. A single stem and leaf plot and a double stem and leaf plot. And each one of those has a subcategory, a set of subcategories, an unordered stem and leaf plot and an ordered. Plot. We'll cover all those throughout the examples today. But example one down at the bottom of the left column there says Hugo recorded the following plant heights. And we don't know what units they are, so we're just going to go with the numbers 62, 71, 82, 65, 73, 84, 62, 77, 68, 77, 63, and 77. Two-digit stem and leaf plot is the easiest one of all. Two parts of a stem and leaf plot, a stem and leaf, obviously. As you can see, the main component of the stem and leaf plot is that vertical bar. Everything to the left of the vertical bar is called the stem. Everything that goes to the right of the vertical bar is in the leaf or leaves. Now, as far as the stem goes, there's pretty strict rules regarding the stem. The stem has to include the most consistent data. When I say the most consistent data, that's the stuff, stuff that shows up in the list of numbers most often. That's what goes in the stem. In two-digit numbers, two-digit numbers are easy. It's always the first digits that are going to go over in the stem. Also in the stem, we're not allowed to skip numbers between the start and the end number. So for instance, if my numbers in the stem were going to be 1 through 9 and there was nothing that had a 7 with it, I can't go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9. I'm not allowed to do that. I have to include all of the numbers from the start to the end point. All right. So if we take a look at these numbers, the consistent thing about them is they all start with a 6, a 7, or an 8. So that's what's going to go over in the stem, 6, 7, and 8. And as far as unordered, that's not going to change to ordered. It's still 6, 7, and 8. Now over in the leaf, the leaves are going to be the second digits of the numbers. So for instance, 62 is the first number on my list. So next to the 6, I'm going to put a 2. And that's how we come back with 62. The next number is 71. So next to the 7, I'm going to put a 1. After that is 82. So next to the 8, I'm going to put a 2 for 82. Now the next number is 65. Now since that starts with a 6, that's going to go in the 6 list. It's going to have to go next to the 2. you got to know in a stem and leaf plot we don't ever use commas, we just use spaces. Never use commas here. 
So I'm going to next to the six and the two go to the five again with a slight space between them. 73 comes next, so next to the seven goes three. Again, slight space. 84, next to the eight goes four. 62. Next to the six goes to two. Now, you might say, well, wait, there's already a two in that list. Do I need to put it again? The correct answer is yes, you do. Right? The point of a stem and leaf plot is to be able to find the mean, the median, the mode, and the range more easily. But if you leave a number out, obviously that's going to make that calculation inaccurate. So yes, you have to include it even if it were to happen to repeat. 77, so 7 next to the 7. 68, 8 next to the 6, 77 again, 7 next to the 7, 60, 0 next to the 6, 77, 7 next to the 7. Now, whether it's an ordered stem and leaf plot or an unordered stem and leaf plot, you also have to include a key. The key tells me how the stem and leaf plot is read. In a perfect world, all right, you wouldn't be given this list of numbers you would just be given the stem and leaf plot. We have to know how the stem and leaf plot is read. 60 bar 8 could mean 68, could mean 0.68, could mean 0.068, just depends on how we're writing out the stem and leaf plot. So all you got to do when you're making the key, fetch one set of numbers to the left and the right of the bar. I chose the 6 and the 2, and I say 6 bar 2 equals 62. That key works for both. So it also works over here as well. There you go. Now, in the ordered stem and leaf plot, the only difference is the leaves have to go in order. So it's not like it's a major change. Okay? You've still got the 6, 7, 8. The difference is this list goes in order now. So instead of 2, 5, 2, 8, 0, oh, put it in numerical order from least to greatest, it's going to go 0, 2, 2, 5, 8. And the main reason for doing that is to make it easier to find the median. Other than that, there's not a significant reason to do that. Okay. Now, this list, as you can see, that list, 13777, that's already in order. So that's fine. And of course, 2, 4, that's already. Now you've made the unordered and the ordered stem and leaf plot. Now, unless the book says which one to make, and I know it does at some points, but another point it doesn't. Unless it says which one to make, I don't care. All right. Obviously, it's easier to make the unordered because then you can go right through the number list as they show up and fill them in. But if it says, you got to do what it says. Otherwise, most of you are probably going to make the unordered unless you're a little obsessive compulsive. 